Empower 11, the best of its kind in a highly transformative time. Are you empowered? Ready to turn your life up to 11? Awaken the life of who you are on the inside to match the life you were meant to live on the outside. Empower 11, now is your time. Greetings and welcome to Empower 11 Radio. Today is October 31st, 2012. It's our last day of October and it's also Halloween. This is, uh, again, is our live one hour show. So you're either listening to us uh, in the now or you're listening to us later on iTunes or in the Spreaker iCar. I. I. Uh, <laughs> archives <laughs> and and that is uh that spreaker app is available for you on your smartphone whether it be uh iphone or an android so make sure you can download that and listen to not only our show but many other shows that are broadcasted on spreaker and for more information about empower 11 you can go to empower 11.com that's empower with an e e m p o w e r the number one, the number one dot com. We're in the process of rebuilding that website right now. Um, we're making it much more interactive and we're excited about what's going to be coming out with that. We'd love to hear your feedback, so keep that coming. Uh, you can send your emails to info at empower11.com. And make sure you go to Facebook. Check us out, our, our Facebook uh, fan page on Empower uh, facebook.com forward slash empower 11 and uh, make sure you like us and uh, you can keep up to date uh, updated on everything that is going on with empower 11 so um, my name is Jack Voorhees and, t- and today I am sitting next to my beautiful and lovely and talented and not very scary just loving <laughs> Ann Ribley well I'm sitting next to this wonderful piece of Sweet candy. That's what you are to my life, Jack Voorhees. You are a wonderful partner that's just full of good and great sweetness and genuine compassion and wonderfulness to give to the world. So here on this Halloween blustery day here in Santa Barbara County, it looks a little fallish. Yeah, overcast and, uh, you know, but that's kind of common for this time of day. Uh, It can be uh, overcast in the morning and then bright and sunshiny in an hour or so. It's uh, it's 11 a.m. here in uh, Santa Barbara. We're on uh, Pacific Standard Time. So um, every week, Wednesday, we are right here on, uh, on Spreaker. Now, this is our 30th show, Anne. It is. I am really excited. I have some like fabulous news. We did a show two weeks ago and that was Bust On Through. And I feel like I had a big bust on through. This was beyond a breakthrough in my life. So I feel great with how we are progressing with these shows and the ability for it to embody and manifest in our well, lives. You can't be just be vague like that, Anne. You got to tell us what it is. What's your, <laughs> what, what are you busting through? I'm getting to that. Okay. Uh, well, those who have been following our show all along know that I've been in uh, physical therapy for my leg because I got a new prosthetic leg that's modern with today's technology. It's somewhat of a bionic kind of componentry in the ankle and foot. And so I'm in physical therapy to optimize, and it's actually been quite grueling in a way that I did not expect because I'm really in good shape. But there was a lot of areas that my body had overcompensated to pick up the slack, and there was areas that were weaker. So I'm really getting into a state that's more balanced with my musculature. And I could never stand fully on you know, my leg that did get injured when I got ran over by a lawnmower when I was two, and this leg that I have the prosthetic leg on. I could never stand on it and bear full weight. And mm-hmm. that uh, 
and that was like a, a big component to smoothing out my walking process is if I could not bear full weight on it, there would always be a compensating kind of limping componentry to my walk. And so I felt like I didn't know if it was going to be possible because I could try it and will it with all my mind to want to do it, but the mm-hmm. strength wasn't there. And so I just, it, I've been doing this regularly and now, now, and I even had said to my uh, therapist, I go, do you think it's going to be possible for me to completely bear weight and pick up my left leg? And she's like, I do, Anne. you're just going to have to really keep working at, you know, the program that we've designed. So last night I was getting ready to take a bath and I stood, was able to bear weight on that whole one side of my leg. And that was just, I can't explain the energy of strength that I just feel running through me now over this big breakthrough. I mean, this has been my whole life. I've never been able to do this. So I feel like it's never too late Hmm. to like redesign, reshape our bodies and to gain that balance and that you know, that rapport that we want with how we want to design our bodies, our minds, our lives, our purpose. I was so excited I came out and I said to Jack, watch this. (laughs) And I go, it's going to be fast, but it's really profound. (laughs) (laughs) And so I... I demonstrated it and I've been able to do it again. I was so excited. I even told my son this morning when I first saw him this. So it's really feel like this was more than a breakthrough. This was a bust on through. This is how I know I can keep building now, building on that strength that I knew that became evident. That's truly there for me to make a real big change now. And Hmm. so, well, you're just glowing. That's awesome. (laughs) That is really, uh, I mean, for the, this first time to be after all these years in your life to be able to do this now i mean it really shows that there there are so many possibilities out there for us and and i think that um it's easy to get stuck in some kind of like settling for this is the way it is and then there's this other component to life that if we embrace it we can really just uh, grow into it and you know there there are there are growing pains and we're going to talk a little bit about some of that uh, today our show is about weathering storms and it's kind of fitting because we just had you know one of the biggest uh, storms we've had in a very long time on the east coast a um, lot of a lot of damage was done there. Um, there was uh, quite a few deaths uh, that happened, and um, you know our, our hearts go out to the the people that are are going through whatever they're going through as a result of that. Um, but uh, there is some real empowering things that can happen through weathering storms. You know, we're sitting here on the west coast, and we were not as affected. But, you know, somewhere in the heart and soul of us, you could feel it and be affected because it just, our world becomes much bigger when these storms come because we start to, the the smallness of where we're at in our lives actually begins to dissolve and we begin to see like the bigger picture that we're, there's, there's a whole world, there's people out there and somehow this storm that everybody was having to weather on the East Coast, we you know, sitting in the safety of our homes, could appreciate the safety, could appreciate the calmness that we were experiencing, yet we could feel the connection and the compassion to what people were going through. I mean, it just, there's a lot to this weathering the storms. You know, I I think many people, I mean, we we all have to go through things. I mean, nobody has just... I don't know anybody that's ever just had this perfect life and everything was just all grand and there was never any problems or any issues ever in their life. And and I don't even know if that would be a positive thing. I, I don't believe that would be a positive thing if, uh, you know, pe- people have life too easy. I, I don't believe that, you know, there's that, that character that gets built, the, you know, the, the, the tools of life, you know, don't get developed when that happens. But I, I think that a lot of people take take it personally when bad stuff happens they take it they take it personally when you know stuff happens and and uh it's not necessarily life picking on you yeah i mean even the place of there isn't really even necessarily 
bad things happen, even though it does feel bad, but it becomes gateways into something so much bigger. And it's this identification with it feeling bad that really can um, dismantle our power. Yeah, it, it can simply be um, a reordering or a shifting, a reformatting, a, a recalibration. It, it it can just be life's natural way of of adjusting and becoming back in balance. Yeah, that's part of that chaos theory. Is that what feels like complete chaos is really order being restored? And I, you know, this storm coming through, and it was called the perfect storm, which is and now and then it got identified. A perfect storm is coming, and then it got identified with as Hurricane Sandy. When this storm was coming, you really start to find out that there is this macro bigger world this cosmos that's so much bigger than you know our individualized expression the microcosm that we are in this big macrocosm of life and when you start to be reminded or you can see the presence of this bigness of life it actually begins to dissolve in our individual lives these problems that we've made so big these mm -hmm. issues and situations that in the microcosm of our individual world, seeing this bigger world, that's like, you know, everybody who was confronted with this storm, it immediately puts in check um, the perspective of what's important in life. Mm -hmm. And suddenly these things that we've made big become very small because in the big picture of life, they no longer have that same kind of power because our priorities and perspective have been put in place. You know, so we think about this, like today when we're talking about weathering the storms of life and weathering these storms, you know, in this bigger world, there's the earth and then there's the communities and there's these, you know, there's our communities, which are a sense are the nations of people and states and, you know, these collective identities of energies that are moving in our environment, in, in the mass people. And there's this bigger world. And then there's our individualized worlds, which are our families, our, our individualized contributions, our purpose, what we're doing on our daily level. What are our individualized values that we're interacting with? And I mean values not in the sense of like, what do you morally believe? But, you know, our values are really what's motivating our behaviors and how we're interacting in the world. So you take this big, big macro cosmos, the bigness of the world, and you take our individual worlds and our families and you, you confront it with the storm that's coming. And where do you fit in in this world? And as she said that, the sun broke on through and now is now shining nicely into our, uh, our studio here. Um, I know where we fit is in this yeah. connection, just like yeah. with the sun. It's like we fit in connecting more to this life, our individual life, and branching it into the bigger world that we mm -hmm. live in. You know, it, it was it was a, a lot of components that came together that, that made up this perfect storm. You know, we had this uh, hurricane coming in, uh, hitting this, um, this Arctic air, uh, in the middle is our jet stream, and then we have this full moon, which, you know, raised the, the tides. And I, you know, I've gone through some storms, and, you know, sometimes it can just really seem like life is just crapping all over you. And it's like, I mean, there, there's there's people that would, would tell me like, you know, life or God doesn't give you more than you can handle, and I'd say, well, God must have a lot more faith in me than I do. And I, I, I remember at a point I was saying, you know, geez, this is it. If one more thing happens, you know, I mean, I can not handle what I have. If anything else was to happen more, I could not deal with it. And then, then like two more things would would pile on top of it, you know, and, and, and it just shows you that, that the, you know, the, the capacity is bigger. And, and these, uh, these storms, um, you know, have been, have been empowering. I mean, it, it, some of my, my biggest shifts, my, my, um, 
some some of the best things in my life has have come out of um these really which felt like horrific events uh taking place the perfect storms of your own life huh yes yes <laughs> and and it is uh I mean, there is natural parts of life. There's these cycles, these things that um, the the state of correction, a shift, a uh, back on course, um, and and some sometimes it needs to knock us onto another course because uh, you know our course might not have been that golden place in which we were to be, and and you know I I had. I mean, there, there, there's a few shifts in my life. I mean, there, there's one where I chose to make a major change in my life. When, when I, when I quit, uh, when I, I quit drinking and drugging, I, um, you know, I mean, that was, that was a decision that, uh, that I made, and, um, and it came, you know, that decision came from a lot of pain. If, you know, I, I'd say things like, I, I've said this before, it's like, if life, w if it was just a little less crappy out there than it was, then I might still be out there not living life. You know, I would still be living that kind of an existence. But because it was so incredibly painful and the storm kept getting bigger and bigger and, and harder and harder to endure, then I decided to, uh, to make a change. I think a lot of people can live in that place, Jack, where it's not, something isn't brewing big enough, yet this reality of being numbed out and not in touch and in a painful life just continues on. And, you know, the interesting thing when we talk about storms and these, and I was saying the bigger world and our individual world is, you know, life is alive and it's a rebalancing organism you know we're in you know we we're we're in ecosystems that are their own set of balance and in you know organistic you know place of life that's vitalistic and it's rebalancing itself and when we're in this place in our lives where life is rebalancing for us in whatever that ecosystem could be in our lives, whether it be with relationships, whether it be with career, whether it be with our finances. You know, when we look at what is our current state, like the storm that has come through our economic system right now, that comes from the necessity to rebalance. That anything that life is designed to be healthy and rebalancing and anything that does not fit in that healthy model it will begin to shake and shift and break down in order to be rebuilt into a healthy way. Hmm. I, I think that is a, a, a natural way of, of life. I'm not sure that it always works that way for people. I mean, I've seen people that have been stuck uh, as long as I've known them and nothing nothing has changed and uh i almost feel uh you know like like a storm is needed and they don't they are not getting it in their lives and they're staying on this you know kind of um place of you know just not not being empowered and not living to their full potential and not getting into their golden spot that they're just kind of because things aren't hard enough and, and I, I kind of mentioned that in the beginning that you know if if somebody just had it easy and everything handed to them all the time you know I don't know if that's that's you know that that great place to be I don't I don't think that's that's empowering. I mean, I don't think that we all have to suffer. And, you know, I know that there's like the, these artists that um, have their greatest masterpieces and stuff. And it all came through the suffering and stuff like that. But I, I don't think that that's, that that really has to be the way. But, uh, you know, pain can cause, can be a great motivator for change. I think it's the depth, Jack. I think that, you know, I do believe that life asks 
of that depth, which is that connection, that deeper source, that connection to God, that connection to divine. And I do believe that, yes, people do go through life. The storm had, the storms haven't shaken them up enough in order to grab a hold of that, that deep inner depth within them. However, I do believe that whether it's in the form of our present life right now or whether it's in it takes place in another form that's beyond what we can understand in this world i do believe that life is constantly asking us to connect to that bigger connection of life and the stronger we are connected to it and the quicker we get to that place i do feel the the more grandness the more fullness that our spirit feels with inside ourselves. So yes, people go through, I agree with you on that, and they stay complacent and they stay numbed out. But I do believe that that somewhere that life is not designed to be stagnating. Mm -hmm. And I do believe that there will be a point, whether we understand it in this life, in this form, there will be points where we're all are being asked, invited, opened up to grow into something more instead of staying in the stagnation place because stagnation ultimately leads to breakdown. You know, that might be uh, just my perspective because I don't live in their shoes. And in some of these, you know, when, when I was bringing up that example, there's certain people that, you know, I, I'm, I'm thinking about. and But I don't live in their shoes. So maybe it just seems that way that they're going through this the life on that, in this particular way but um you know i can only really speak from my own experiences you know and and that's what that's what i do i share my experience strength and hope and hoping that it empowers others and because i i know there's different ways of learning there's different ways that we can develop there's you know we can either get out ahead of our lives and learn from how other people have done it and and we can go out there and seek or we can just change from what we experience and uh, without the seeking. And I think getting out ahead of your life is, is a much better place to be. Yeah, it's much more empowering than looking back and constantly having to make adjustments in the now. Then there's that place where, okay, you at least know when you're making your adjustments in the now, but then there's that place of just getting out in front of your life where you can almost feel it and know it. And, you know, Technology has has allowed us to live more in different ways to to understand and reciprocate with our world around it. I mean, we knew the storm was coming. We have the technology to know it ahead of time. So there was a lot of people that were able to get out in front of it that were not like out in their regular life and totally, you know, flooded out and had time to prepare for the storm that was coming and being out in front of it. And the symbol of what we can do with these weather patterns of getting out in front of it and how we've used technology and how we're using our life skills to get out in front of our lives are the same things that we can do on our own individual worlds hmm. and our individual worlds that are comprised of our relationships, of our career, of our purpose, of our finances. The more we can get out in front of our lives by using the availability and the access that we have to build and make life Thriving today is is easier than it's ever been because the tools are there. I mean, these weather patterns we talk about back in a time when there was, you know, not time to prepare for when something like this would happen. I mean, this would devastate different communities. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, when there's no warning, no early detection, no way to prepare yourself. I mean, you, you would have to live in a more prepared state just uh, knowing that there's all these unknowns. Um, and sometimes that safety yeah. of, of having this preparedness yeah. can also cause us to be more asleep and taking for granted and numbed out and not being as acute and as aware and mm -hmm. as present to yeah. how energy is moving around us. So I've had, uh, you know, I had three that, that I can really uh, recall I mean uh, when, when I when I really think about it I think there, there's three major storms that I've, I've had uh, in my life and, and one was when I when I quit drinking and drugging and you know got into recovery and you know it was almost 15 years ago 
Um, you know, I wanted to say something, Jack, when you talk about drinking and drugging, because a lot of times people think it's like this extreme version. But you're just talking about getting into this place where you're depending on outside sources, which would include a lot of things that are considered acceptable recreationally, like, you know, marijuana and, you know, alcohol. And a lot of times people think it's only bad when it's extreme, because this is the conversation that comes up with the kids a lot of times. Yeah, I mean, the kids are at that age and they're they're curious and they're like, what are what's the worst drug? Because, you know, like... They know people, they know of, of me being in recovery. They know of other people um, that are, you know, in recovery. And, um, you know, they say, well, what's the worst uh, drug? Is, is it crystal meth? Or is, and I, I keep saying that it's, it's the, the point that people really don't understand is it does not matter what or how much you used. It, it, it really doesn't matter. I mean, it, it could be, you know, it doesn't matter if you used... I mean, you know, two grams of cocaine a day or you, you know, would smoke a joint a day or whatever it is. It, it, the thing is that you're not living life on life's terms and you're looking for outside sources to manufacture the feelings that you're not able to um, t to create on your own or the you don't have the coping skills. So you turn to other outside uh, substances or maybe even not substances it could be that you turn to gambling or porn or shopping or food food yeah I mean there's there's all kinds of things that, that people use um, you know to try to cope with things that that really uh, don't empower them um, so I just wanted to qualify this shift because, I mean, this mm -hmm. was like a really a strong reorientation. This wasn't about, you know, oh, I did these things and I stopped doing those things. This was you were shifting your whole orientation to life. And I mean, this is your journey has. Well, yeah, I mean, I was brought up in the hippie commune stuff and, you know, part of that old, uh, you know, is a uh, big drug scene and stuff like that. And, you know, that was the more acceptable the way um i didn't i didn't grow up in this like you know strict catholic upbringing kind of thing or whatever you know um you know so, so uh, growing up that way and you know just kind of you know almost raised to be to have uh this this kind of issue um it was a, it was a big shift it was a huge i mean it was I had to become willing to change everything in my life, and um, and, and I was, you know, I I was willing, and that that's a key factor is as having the willingness. So that was a huge storm of change and, and all that. And then um, when I had five years or almost five years of recovery, I, I remember I was miserable, and. Uh, all kinds of life circumstances just came uh, down on me, you know, I, one on top of another, on top of another, on top of another. Um, I remember saying to one of my sponsees, it's like, I, I, I don't think I can sponsor you right now. I just don't think I have it in me. I, I you know, I, I'm going through so much crap right now. And he said, watching you get through all of this uh clean and sober is all i need you know so wow. um but you know to get really real with you here um you know so when it, when i was back to before i got into recovery when you know thoughts would come into my head you know like r memories of past stuff that had happened to me you know horrific childhood events and things and uh, I would shake. I would literally, I remember, just like shake and like shake it off. And I would go right for the bottle or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then when I got into recovery, you know, I started living a sober life. And But I still would not allow myself to go there, to, to allow those, those thoughts and things to come into my head. But it was when... Uh, those memories. Yeah, yeah. And um, it was when... Uh, life had knocked me down. I mean, I was I was so depressed. I was it was it was just a, a really what felt like just a, a horrific, 
horrible, just very, very bad time in my life. And I had not the strength to push those those memories aside. And they, be, they, they came flooding back and in vivid detail, um, you know, like the, this, the, like you, like you taste and smell and things like that. I mean, it was like, I, I remember this uh, feeling of uh, having this uh, dirt and gravel in my mouth as like I was being held down with my face in, in the dirt and, uh, um, you know, trying to breathe and I got this dirt and gravel in my mouth and I could like feel it, taste it in, in my mouth. I mean, the, the, the memories came back that, that vividly. Um, but the thing is, that was so empowering about this storm is that um, it, uh, I, fa I, got, I faced the demons and I didn't push them away. I didn't have the strength not to. So this storm really empowered me by having to face these things and not being able to push them away and uh, that that was the that was a, a big I mean a huge breakthrough in, in my life well that's yeah. what's interesting about this storm that just came through and how it was on a full moon not to mention that a full moon is about lighting up that which is dark and hidden so that it can dissolve and not have power and it's interesting that that phase in your life represented almost like that perfect storm on a full moon where that which was hidden needed to be brought to light, which is facing it, so it begins to dissolve. Yeah, anything you bring out to light. I mean, it's the secrets that keep us sick. It's the when you bring things out into the light and you talk about them and you should, it, it, it just takes their power. The power that they have are when they're hidden in the dark in the closet. I mean, they're... They're always going to have the, this this profound, huge uh, uh, influence in, in our lives. But when we, we take them out and let the light shine on it, it'll dry them all up and crumble them into little pieces and they can fly away. So you became much freer after you... I, I did, I did. And then... Uh, then See, the... it's acceptance, Jack. I say this to you over and over again. You have a power. This comes back to you have a, a lot of you own acceptance when and going through that experience, you began to accept that uh, this is what's happened to me. This is my past. These are the memories. Yeah, there's no other way. I mean, the only way through is through. And I, I keep saying it. The, the only way through is through. And that, that that's part of acceptance. There's no side steps. There's no, you know, antidepressants that are going to, you know, make me feel better if I don't deal with my stuff. And yeah. It's just not going to happen. And then the the third um, the the third one was uh, not that long ago. It was um, uh, two thousand nine, and I um, you know I had just had a lot of stuff going. On. I was living a life that uh, wasn't um, it, it wasn't it wasn't in that golden place. It wasn't in that 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 place where I, I was living in kind of a lie of because uh, you know I w wanted this relationship and all this but it, it just didn't it wasn't um, it, it wasn't that place of magic and it, it caused great things to happen like I you know when I first got into the relationship I, I was I was thriving and then by the end I, I was like I could hardly get out of bed um, and, you know, and then a lot of other life circumstances were happening. And, you know, my, my son, um, you know, we were told that he was going to have to have this major operation that uh, was, you know, he would, it would cause him to be like a, um, he had a handicap, you know, that they were going to have to put steel rods up and down his whole spine and fuse everything and stuff, you know, and, and that was very you know, difficult to, um to deal with and then at that time my um my uh who was my fiance at the time you know said she wanted to uh separate and you know all these things weren't weren't going weren't going well and uh uh it it it, it actually so there was there was a breakup and we were both in recovery and all the recovery people just went with her with, with this this girl I didn't really have 
uh, you know, the girl who I was with, I didn't really have that support group that I had been relying on for all this time and, and stuff. So um, when that all kind of crumbled, you know, all my friends seemed, were gone, all this breakup, uh, I really had to get back to self. And I really had to, you know, I, there, was, there was two choices to just um, not do anything and live in this despair or get up and take action and I, I chose to get up and take action and um, it, it was just a great place to be I mean I, I had really had to do this real self-reliance where you know there was there was little to no support from anyone else it's interesting because you went through that and then all of those friends that aligned in a certain way all of that ended up breaking down because it wasn't based on this place that was full on for everyone. And it was uh, very polarizing, the place people were doing it from. So a lot of friendships have changed since then. And, and yeah. it's interesting. People come to you now, Jack, because of how you've got on the other side of things in your life. And Yeah, well, well part, of, part of the danger that, that comes in when you have this kind of tight-knit support group kind of thing where these friends are very close and everything um is that like what was happening was um sponsors were becoming co-signers sponsees were becoming groupies and everybody was kind of co-signing this really kind of bad behaviors and stuff you know and it just became acceptable and uh you, were, you know there was no like holding yourself to this higher standard it, it just really um it became a, a, a trap and so you got yourself out on the other side in a way that you that you stood on healthier ground through this whole breakup of the relationship of friendships and and then people would seek you out jack in order to say how are you making all these changes because your demonstration of this strength and self-reliance came, you know, brilliantly shining through, through this whole circumstances. So as you weathered that storm, yeah, people yeah, saw well, you standing there on high ground. Right. So, so Anne, you had some um, very big storms yourself. <laughs> I know. So. We were preparing for the show, and we were both asking each other about our different storms that we've weathered, and it's just... You know, mine started at two when I was ran over by a lawnmower. And then it's like from there, you know, I had all these, you know, rehabilitative and corrective ways. And so there's like, I was t explaining to Jack, there's like a couple of kind of storms that I think we can experience in life. One that just comes out of the blue and it happens and there's mm -hmm. no time to prepare for it. And it just happens and you have to accept it because there's nowhere to go but accept what has happened. And that, that is what had ha happened when this experience happened with my leg and then the other one was so that was when i was two and then the other one was when i was seven my little oh, wait, wait, wait. so when you're two i was ran over by a lawnmower right and and, and then you had to go through well that was the start of corrective surgeries and i went through corrective surgeries all the way up till i was 15. Mm -hmm. so so my whole childhood that feels like that was a storm i had to weather through was yeah. Well, yes. But the, so this first storm, I mean, basically getting run over by a lumber, how did that empower you? Well, I mean, I, you, people can, I'm sure that there's, there's got to be some listeners saying she's run over by a llama. That didn't empower her. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it, it empowered me in like so many ways because that depth, that's what I was talking about. Like it caused me to have to draw upon that depth. I, you know, I say this a lot to young girls because a lot of people have, a lot of young girls and I have a lot of young, very beautiful nieces, you know, come to me for advice. And what happens is, especially when women are, when women are just born with these natural good looks, you don't have to work for it. Sometimes that can be a hindrance to the depth that needs to be cultivated because suddenly you get all this attention, you get this whole life. And, and you haven't had to put the effort forward in order to attract all this attention, mm -hmm. all this instant response and manifesting, you know, the kind of, you know, at that time, what's the important things to you. And what happens is I feel like for me is that this accident happened so early on that I had to start immediately calling upon that depth. 
early on in my life. I was explaining this to Jack too. I had a body that's wired to be very athletic and I was. I was very active. I'd ride my bike 13 miles a day when I was, you know, different when I was 10, 11, you know, just very active. And so I had to accept this body that necessarily wouldn't do the things that I on my inside felt like I would I should be doing. So there was a lot of acceptance, a lot of um you know, depth. And then there's also I think when when we're when these storms come and situations happen, I think it starts to illuminate and highlight other faculties, other areas of our whole being that can become activated that's out of the normal status quo. And I do feel that was a gift that came out of this accident was using my mind and using different ways of my whole aura and being differently hmm. to navigate in the world. And so then you had another storm. Well, this... when, when I was seven, yeah. my little, my, our youngest, my youngest brother drowned in our home pool. We had a home accident where he drowned in our pool and he was a year and a half old. And it, that's, that was quite, um, it's, you know, it was just, it was a significant piece. We didn't live there, you know, for, it didn't, there were so many things that had happened with my leg. And then this thing happened with my brother and that our family didn't like, sometimes families can have one tragedy and their whole world centers and keeps going back to that one tragedy. I mean, that wasn't what happened with when my brother drowned, but it was a significant part of watching my parents weather that storm and seeing them get out on the other side and seeing them stay in a place of service because they were in the healthcare industry, you know, staying in purpose with their life, using that to build themselves stronger. And, but it was, there was this fragility that I did experience with life that I had this little brother that, you know, lit up and made all of us happy. That was a year and a half old interacting with all of us. And then one day he was gone and seeing how quickly life can change. Hmm. And, uh, I remember being at the funeral thinking I wanted to cry so bad. And I didn't know if you, I didn't even know if, are you supposed to cry or not? And I looked around and I saw my, my oldest brother crying and I saw everybody else crying. I'm like, oh, okay, good. I get to cry. <laughs> and I remember that having this significant impact, like, oh, it is okay to cry here. And, uh, so you think the way that that storm empowered you was to realize that the frigidity of life? Yeah. is understanding that, you know, that we can't take anything for granted. You know, and I know that was profoundly affected to me with even my body itself, you know, with having a leg that was injured is not taking even our bodies for granted. So I was, I've always had this commitment to be in this place of honoring my body and doing the best I can with my body, you know, and, and honoring it. I mean, I feel like there's a lot of people right now that struggle with their weight. And I feel if you got more in the business of getting connected to honoring your body, it would become easier. It'd become easier to take charge of that. You know, it's that disconnect where you, it makes it harder to honor it. So I think with my uh, brother, definitely that had a, had a big part of that. But now, okay, so those situations, life happened and I had to accept it and I had to learn from it. But, you know, the big storm that I went through was later in my life when I was, life was complicated with my marriage that I had for 18 years, business that was, you know, intertwined with, you know, lots of relationships, close relationships, friendships at that time, and my marriage. And I, that was a, a another storm that I had to weather through that I had to pull upon me choosing. And that felt really hard at that time was choosing, um, the way out of that where the other ones when the storm came in i had no choice in order to weather that i had to accept it for what it was and i had to grow myself stronger the other ones i had to grow myself stronger to get myself out of it and hmm. i remember at that time that feeling so hard because that was a part of me i'd never exercised and i think it's important for people to know that that you can get on through anything that's happening in your life and you can make a change and it doesn't even have to be a storm it could be as simply as reshaping your body, reshaping your mind, reshaping your career, reshaping your love relationship. I mean, all of those areas in my life, I feel like I have been in a constant place of reshaping. And my source and strength to do that has come from the storms that have happened just to me without me having a choice to it. And then the other ones have been storms that have happened in a way that I've chose to recalibrate, reconfigure my life. And there was a certain level of strength that I had to 
gain an exercise with inside myself to weather that storm. I feel like that was harder for me at this time. Yeah. The, the one that I had to choose myself, it felt harder. But I, I gosh, I've gained so much by weathering that. And I look at people who stay complacent because of their fear of weathering those storms because they have to choose it. But I know that when I say that you have to choose it or life will eventually choose it for you is what I do feel. That depth, life will ask you to, to gain that depth and that growth. So when the storm comes, I mean, there's still choices to be made. And, and somebody making those choices can be difficult. Right. And, um, but, but empowering as well. You know, when, when you're able to make the, those, the, I mean, the, the tough decisions, the decisions that really mean something, are, those have impact. I mean, it's, sometimes when storms come, you know, the, the fluff has to go to side. And we look at what are the core, what, what you know, core changes and stuff. And, and um, we can see, you know, I'm just going to sit here and wait for the storm to pass. Sometimes that, that's a thing to do. And then there's other times when it's time to step up and take action. You know, it's like this shelter is not going to support me in the hair. I'm moving. We're, right. we're I'm taking everything. We're moving to higher ground or whatever we got to yeah. do. You know? Right. Yeah. You know, I, I would say for me, you know, I, with the most recent one, I, how I got weathered through it is I got really anchored into a taste of peace inside of me. And I anchored to that. I grabbed a hold of that. And I knew if I stayed true to what is true peace inside of me in this life I should be living, that I could weather the storm. And how I did it, one of the ways that I did it that was, you know, transformative, it was, as I would say, what is life asking of me today? Because it was almost, when you're in the midst of a storm, it's almost too much to think of everything you have to do. But mm -hmm. if it's like, if you're in that moment, what am I being asked to do right now? And you do that well, and you do that sharp, and you do that aware, then somehow when the next moment comes up, or the next day comes up, then you can do that sharp and you can do that well. What is life asking of me today? It was, I grabbed, I know that I weathered this most recent storm that was in my life, which, which was a complete shift in business and how my money was made and a complete shift in my whole relationship and my love relationship and my core family unit and even my friendships. I know that all of that came from grabbing a hold of peace, knowing I could not go wrong with peace in my heart, knowing that that was going to weather me through this, doing the right thing from that place of peace. That's like, that's the kind of peace I'm talking about. Not of the mind, but of the heart. And doing really good what life is asking of me today. And in that place of peace, I know you really honored truth. Yeah. Well, that's where peace definitely comes from. It's not a place of the mind. It's, it's being truthful is where when we're truthful to our mm -hmm. lives and to ourselves and to every situation in that moment, we get that peace. Well, when storms come, I mean, it, it's kind of like, it, it's, it becomes more difficult to go like, la, 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 can't hear you, can't hear it, you know, it doesn't exist. Well, those you, are the you people that get really face it. Those are the people that get washed away. Yeah. They do, yeah. they will, they'll get swallowed up in it. Yeah, unaware. It, it's funny, like, like uh, when uh, a tsunami hits, the animals are out of there. Yeah. You know, I mean, they know ahead of time. They're like, well, stuff's wrong. We're out, man. We're, you know, they're because they're, they're aware of what's going on. And then uh, others, like humans, can be so into what they're doing and, you know, all this, like, you know, like just assume that uh, they're just always going to come out. You know, they're so self involved that they're, they're just not aware of the dangers that are around them. Well, that was what was really interesting to that vocal workshop I just did recently. And he was talking about the difference between having self orientation in your world versus self absorption. Hmm. Gosh, self orientation. I thought that was such powerful language that he used because it's like self orientation means you know where you stand in your orientation with your world and you're clear so you have that presence to you. So storms are, are, you know, they're natural. I mean, and, and nature shows us these storms. But there's, you know, the storms in our own life are natural too. Because energy is always flowing. Everything is always expanding and contracting. Life breathes. It has this, everything's moving in and out. Nothing is just staying stagnant. You know, it's when we are out of flow with that, then those are when the, the, these these hard times come, you know. And, and, and life 
life is messy you know it, it's not always just this place of just uh, uh, grace and flow sometimes you know things get scattered all over the place a storm comes and blows everything all over and it's up to us to to come and reorder these these things that's where it's a calling forth for the grace and flow it's a reordering you know it's like if you go through and declutter your house it's like in the process of decluttering there's this place of where it is chaotic and it's out of order and it's overwhelming almost out of what it feels like but it's the it's the way through to the order hmm. so we, we have a we have a lot more to cover because uh, we really want to get into some of these uh, how to's what to do if you're in the midst of a, of a storm in your life uh, what what can we do and I have a, I have a feeling that, uh, and I had this feeling before, there's a lot to cover and, and we may go over and I'm okay with that. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, that, that's, a beauty, that's a beauty about the way that we've uh, formatted our show. If we go over, we go over. So that's it. Um, so, so one of the things that I would highly recommend if you're going through or when you're going through this storm is to ask for help. And Anne, would you agree with that? Yeah, I say ask for help or be the help. Well, be yeah, sometimes you need to ask yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you say like, yeah, I mean, because there's Cause, there's some things that, that we have to, like, we ask for help. Well, we ask for help from from uh, God or our higher power or what may what it may be um, because it's just too much for us to handle so we need we need help and in asking for help is it, it's it's a it's a powerful thing just just the asking and and that that'll help you to connect with your higher power your God whatever it is that that is uh, the source of strength for you and, and uh, connects you to uh, this this faith. Yeah, I mean, I would definitely say when I was going through what I talk about, my biggest storm in, in my life, when my life was reconfiguring business-wise, economic-wise, with my children, everything, I mean, I had to be in daily commune with asking for help and trusting in that process. I mean, really what we're talking about is the empowered love and state where who you are on the inside gets into rapport with the world on the outside and it begins to rapport in this magical way that's empowering because it begins to get synchronized. You begin to know what you need to do. You begin to ask for help and it begins to reveal itself in the ways that, are, that need to be known to you. And, and when you at, when you're asking of yourself, it, it's about um, you know there, there's this place to help yourself. You know you you, need, you can't just sit there. You you gotta there there's a time uh, that calls on you to do something. And and this um, this is a more place of being present. Well, you know another thing when I say be the help, I know for me because I had small children. I didn't have time to like sit back and feel sorry for myself. I didn't have time to to have so much self focus because I could I had to be the help for these children during mm -hmm. that time in my life. I had to make sure that our life was stable, they had food on the table. And when you can be the help in midst of these storms for other people, for situations around you, it, you there's like this this current of energy that begins to carry you because you do connect with that life force. You know, I was watching I think that one of the most striking images when I was watching what, you know, the storm that just came through on the East Coast that just had this effect on me was watching this hospital that the backup generators were closed down and it was a, it was a neonatal center where they had these infants that were relying on um, those respirators for, yeah. and they were having to transport them out of there for their, you know, they were these, and I was watching these, you know, these different nurses and stuff. And as they were holding these little babies and they had these generators like connected to them and that that's like being the help. I mean, can you imagine like these, these babies are going to, you know, they're going to make it through this storm and they're going to grow up and they're going to have a life. I mean, I can find myself just getting emotional thinking about it right now. And it all came to that person who was willing to be there in that storm and help carry that baby to safety. I yeah, mean, so people, I mean, there's time to step up and get in the driver's seat. 
There's... So it's like ask for help and be the help, the help for yourself, help for those around you, because mm -hmm. I truly believe there's an energy, a good karmic energy that rises forward to be of our assistance that it magnifies when we're getting to that place. Yeah, and in that place, I mean, there's this place of acceptance. I mean, you just, boom, you know, this is what is, and I'm going to deal with it. And it's not this, uh, um, yeah, I mean, it's a place of understanding that everything changes. It's not just, it's being, oh, why is this happening to me? Oh, what was me and all this stuff? It's like, don't be a victim. And, and, and in this place of victim, a lot of this victim stuff comes in isolation. Yeah, so I know that with a storm, to weather a storm, we have to reach out and we have to connect. We have to reach out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you ask for help from others as well. And so... So you're connecting to, to, your, to your God, you're connecting, you're being present with yourself, and you're connecting with others. I mean, I know that that's... And there's not the room then, as mm -hmm. much room to play the victim and to go into isolation, because that's the doom in these kind of weathering the storm areas. And understand that this too shall pass. You know, I mean, it's not going to last forever. Storms come and they go. So, you know, understand the only way through is through. And, and that you, there is relief. There is light. The light will come. The, the, the clouds will part and the sun will shine through again. I also know that getting still is so important because if you think about it, that going through this storm, one of the, the best ways to safety that they had to tell everybody is areas had to be evacuated. That means our busy lives could not continue on to ensure our safety. There was some power in getting still. Go back, get still. Everything had to go into this calm energy so that we have the power to do what's needed when it's time to be needed. And we're able to hear and get the help that we need when it's time to, to move and do the action. I really think that stillness is a big part of when you're in a storm. Mm -hmm. That's how you get into the eye of the storm is that it's in that calm energy. And so we all know this, when a crisis comes up, one of the best ways to do it is they have to get people more into this not frantic energy, but into this still place. Yeah, so the, you know they get prepared. I mean, this being prepared is a really important part of it. You, you're prepared so that you, when the time comes, you can get into the still place of safety. And so I know for my myself, it's when I look at what happened in my life, is there was a lot of stillness. I got real still with myself, real still with what is. And I think I had a lot of protection in that because in that protection of that stillness, and my awareness to what is today asking for me, I, I was really um, synchronized. Yes, what is today asking of you? you know, yes. that, that is the, uh, the one day at a time kind of uh, a thing, you know, just um, taking care of what, what is and, you know, not getting in this place of panic about everything about tomorrow. You know, we, we do the best we can of, to our ability today and then... Uh, you know, we, we deal with tomorrow when tomorrow is, is today. <laughs> yeah, and I like this when you had mentioned, Jack, about not catastrophizing. Oh, yeah. I mean, cause, because that's our doom. If yeah. whatever we're in in our life, whatever storm it is, even if it's really small, even if it's just an altercation that's happened in an afternoon with a person, mm -hmm. it's whenever we catastrophize, we expand that energy. Yeah, I mean, this catastrophize thing can cause you not to take action. And you need to take action when action is called for. You know, if, if you're in this place where, oh, we're doomed, you know, there's nothing I can do, that is not an uh, empowering place to be. You need to be able to step up and take this action. And you're not going to be there if you're catastrophizing everything and doom and gloom and, and all that. And not only that, I really feel that in every storm there's going to be opportunities. There's going to be opportunities after the storm has come and went. And these opportunities, I look at like our relationship, Jack, today and where mm -hmm. we are. This was an opportunity that came only through weathering the storm and being open to the newness and that does not happen for people who, when something happens in life and they stay in the catastrophe of it and they keep catastrophizing it, mm -hmm. they miss out on these opportunities that will come and that newness that will want to deliver to you. And that energy that comes from this storm, I mean, that, that causes this, this change, I mean, we can piggyback on that energy, you know, and just, you know, use this as an opportunity to... Just uh, embrace the new change and what is. 
I think that was a lot of what was really attractive between the two of us is that we had found out we both went through something similar, like a similar recalibration of our lives. And we both had this like fresh, alive energy and excitement for our dreams and excitement with what we were going to build. And and we were drawn towards that. So people that were like this negativity or this whatever, not, not empowering. I mean, we stepped away from those negative people and, and stepped away from negative things that can that can bring us down. And we embraced the new and the power and the energy of what is. Oh, that was a big one for me too, Jack, is st stepping away from that energy is I know that I even had to say to certain, you know, family members and even certain friendships, I cannot go there anymore. I cannot have these conversations. I can't even talk about this anymore because it was, it was too much of dwelling in the same catastrophizing place and it was going to take me down and I knew the direction I wanted to go in. I knew the change I wanted to make and I knew I was willing to weather that. And that's where I end up having to be in some aloneness in this yeah. is because I, I was willing to be more alone and be okay with that in my peace than it was to be com commiserating with people at a certain level that was just going to keep bringing me down. Hmm. Well, I got to mention this tool that that I use when weathering a storm. Uh, when 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 life is really coming down, uh, it it's um, important for me to make lists because you know I I, I make lists. It, it gets me. It takes some of that emotional equation out of it, and I, I can uh, I feel more empowered when I when I have a list. You know, okay, here's some actions that I can do, and and sometimes it's just here's actions I can do to get me through the day. And um, like when I was going through my my last storm, I was like, okay, to keep myself sane, I'm going to. Um, do these daily activities you know i pray i meditate i work out you know and drink water i did you know i started doing writing down all these really um empowering things for me to do and as i was doing that my list started getting bigger and bigger about these empowering things to do every day and uh you know uh the the thing is it got so big that i figured i i realized i couldn't do them all in everything in one day so as long as i did most things on most days that was uh, that was good and and i literally would check them off and, and there's some that i added like you know call somebody and tell them i care about them that was one of that was a thing i actually wrote down on my list that's and I was good doing jack that because day. when we're when these storms happen i mean our caring for other people really gets illuminated and to live in that place you know and to yeah. be reminded to stay in that place. And I started putting positive messages all over, all over my house. You know, just uh, I had these big sticky note things, and I was sticking them all. You know, even when I was leaving the house and the door, I said, you know, uh, have a great time while you're out. Uh, smile. You know, just things like that. Yeah. So, Anne, you have something uh, to kind of close with that you, you'd like to read for us. Yeah, I just want to wrap this up that, you know, wherever you're at, whatever storms in your own life, you know, whether it's been uh, you're on the East Coast and it's really been the elements of life itself or it's the elements that are prevalent today that can that we need to weather through, you know, however you're listening to this broadcast right now, I invite you to take a few minutes to breathe this in. And know that for even the sun can triumph water. The intensity of light can evaporate one of the most powerful elements on earth. You too are truly a beam of light, taking temporary housing in your body. Remember your origin of light to heal, to love, to rise up and shine. Miraculously distressing situations can evaporate. Dreams can nourish and flourish and your heart can be light and bright. Shine on, be dazzling one. Hope to see you next week at 11. Yes, thank you for tuning in. We really appreciate your presence and have an empowered week. We will see you next week on the air.